Time now for everybody's favorite guessing game, What's My Line? Brought to you by New Stopette, America's leading spray deodorant. Now with its anti-immunity factor. Poof, there goes perspiration. Now let's all play What's My Line? <laughs> Let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, our publisher panelist, Mr. Bennett Cerf. Thank you. And on my right, one of the nicest girls in the whole world, a little nervous tonight because it's her first appearance in television in almost an hour, Miss <laughs> Arlene Francis. Thank you, Bennett. And on my right, we welcome back our dear friend, one long pan, Fred <laughs> Allen. <laughs> I've had my pan shortened, Arlene, for tonight. And on my right, ladies and gentlemen, a young lady who told me tonight that the reason the sun is so lonesome these days is because the stock market goes down early in the afternoon and doesn't wait for the sun, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. <laughs> And tonight, I'm very happy to be able to scoop our moderator with the news that the winner of this year's Peabody Award for Best Newscaster is going to be Mr. John Charles Daly. Thanks very much. A wonderful start for this evening, and I'll try to do as good for all of the panel as they have done for me. I didn't know you could do the Peabody, John. You didn't know I... Oh, actually, I learned it when I was in school. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to What's My Line. And once again tonight, we have some very interesting and nice people with some interesting and nice occupations. And we're going to depart from our normal procedures panel. So would you please put your masks on right now? Now? Our friends who are the contestants uh, will, of course, arrive with some interesting occupations, all of them intended to baffle the panel, and we trust that this particular procedure will baffle the panel more than somewhat. <laughs> we'll also have a famous guest challenger before the panel a bit later on, but we think it's about time that these experts of ours, these fine experts, get a chance to uh, face up to the first test of the evening. We'll wait only until all of the masks are on, and uh, Dorothy Kilgallen's coming into the stretch, and now the bow is tied and the knot is on there, and are all the masks in place? Yes, yes, yes Mr. Good. Daly. So will you come in, challenger, and sign in, please? <laughs> Mrs. X, how are you? Hi, it's how nice are to you, see John? you. Good to see you. And where are you from? I'm from Richmond, Virginia. Richmond, Virginia. Oh. Well, it's nice to have you with us. I think uh, we will dispense with the normal walk down, and we will also dispense with the wild guesses. So will you come over here and sit down yes. next to me, Thanks. please? And uh, panel, <laughs> I think there's enough room. And the panel, I just hope that uh, you do well. We will, of course, let the folks at home know what our challenger's line is. At the same time, uh, we weren't going to tell you a thing, but let's let the people at home know what our challenge's line is, and then let the panel go away. All right, panel, all the information you're going to get is that our challenger is salaried. You know how we score this device, ma'am? Mm, yes, I think so. All right, fine. Then we will just tell them that you're salaried and begin the general questioning with Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you work for a profit-making organization? Yes. Your lady. I hope so. <laughs> uh, do you deal in services? Yes. Uh, is there something about you as you sit next to John Daly that is so distinctive that if I didn't have my mask on, I'd know what you did just to look at you? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> well, are you tattooed? <laughs> Not tattooed. One down and time to go, Mr. Allen. Well, are you in uh, some form of show business? Yes. Are you uh, currently with the circus? Yes. Huh? Yes. You are? Uh, are you fuzzy about the jowls? No. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Two down well, and eight I to go. Bearded lady, I thought. No, no bearded lady. Miss Francis, two down and eight to go. 
Well, are you part of the sideshow as opposed to being a performer in the three rings upstairs? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Sir. Do you do something above the audience, that is, something on wires or ropes or... that is, high up in the arena? No. That makes it four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Do you have anything to do with animals? Uh, no. Actually, that's five down and five to go, reserving, Dorothy, the fact that many people in the circus might have contact with animals, but this is not a specific application here. Five down and five to go, Mr. Allen. Do you uh, function on the ground? Yes. Are you uh, active during the show as opposed to one appearance during the evening or during yes. the performance? You're, you're through the show itself? Yes. Are you a lady clown? Yes. Yes. And I would now like to formally introduce <laughs> Mrs. Felix Adler oh, in no. costume. <laughs> and actually, we had a lot of problems. We wanted Mrs. Adler Which to be with us. Which one is you, John? Which one is more? <laughs> but, actually, as you know, the circus is up at Madison Square Garden, and Mrs. Adler was nice enough to be in costume, come down here, and be here in time. That's the, the only program. way you can see sawdust these days to go to the circus. <laughs> the only way you can see sawdust? Yes, now that the Sloans have given it out. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Adler, I think we gave them a somewhat rough time of it. I hope so. And my thanks for being our guest. It was wonderful to have the circus. Would you light up your circus. nose for us before you go? Sure. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> Well, a very good beginning, panel. Uh, let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you sign in, please, ma'am? Celia Abrams, is that right? <laughs> Mrs. Abrams says she's as nervous as she possibly can be. Well, you don't have to be nervous, because actually, if you tell us where you're from... Maplewood, New Jersey. Maplewood, New Jersey. You'll find those four folks over on the panel just about as nice as any people you've ever seen. That have a look at it, will you? Hello, Mrs. Abrams. Happy Hi. Easter, Mrs. Abrams. Hello, Mrs. Abrams. All right, Mrs. What's Abrams, left over here, if you will, now, and sit down next to me. And the panel is going to get one free guess as to what your line may be, and we'll begin the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think she teaches mathematics. Teaches mathematics, Mr. Allen. I think uh, Miss Abrams is a <laughs> silex watcher in a coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Francis. I think she's a caramel cutter in a candy factory. Mr. Sir. I think Mrs. Abrams is the new bat boy of the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mrs. Celia Abrams, and at the same time, we will tell them what Mrs. Abrams' line is. Mrs. Abrams, do you know how we score? Yes, I do. Well, that's fine. Then Mrs. Abrams is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Fred Allen. Uh, Mrs. Abrams, is there a uh, product involved in what you do? Yes. Using the word loosely, might we say that the product is a useful product? Yes. It is a useful product. <laughs> uh, is it a, a product that might be construed as being attractive to look at? Yes. <laughs> Is it something that women might enjoy? Yes. Is it something that, that uh, uh, might make a woman more appealing to the opposite sex? Yes. It has been known to do so. Am I uh, on the garden path again, do you think? <laughs> well, you're doing very well, Fred, actually. I'm Caught among the vines once more. Oh, no, you're doing... Well, I know what I'm trying to get at. Now, if, if uh, Arlene had uh, quite a lot of this on her, could I smell it from here? <laughs> no. It's not a perfume, then. No, it is not, <laughs> well, Mr. Like Allen. It. One down and nine I've to go. i had my one cent's worth. <laughs> oh, Miss Francis. A pun? Yes. Uh-huh. Ben wanted... wasn't ready. <laughs> you want to do it again, Fred? No. No? All right. All right, Miss Arlene, one down and nine to go. Well, is this anything, loosely speaking again, that might be worn? Yes. In some instances, it is worn, yes, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, is it uh, found in the home? Yes. Is it found usually in a particular room in the home? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Smith. Mrs. Abrams, would this 
product have value? Yes. Has it anything to do with legal tender, money or anything like that? Yes. Uh, is it correct then that you do not work for a profit-making organization? Is it correct then that you do I, not I work you, for a profit-making organization? Is it some kind of a, more or less a government job? You certainly do. I just thought we'd let him hang himself a little bit more before it we flip the card. Oh, That's right. Yeah. It is a profit-making organization. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. You work for a profit-making organization. Yes. Yeah. But the product that we're talking about is green. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh. Well, then you, re you deal with various types of things that have value. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you work for a, a bank or an investment company of any type? No. No. That's four down and six to go, Mr. Allen. Do you have an office at which you, you function? Do you yes. have an office? Or yes. do you work out of doors? No, Miss, Mrs. Abrams works at home. Well, she office. has a sort of a weather-beaten look. I just... <laughs> he means that in the gentlest of spirits. Oh, no. I, I mean with the color and everything. You're not... Uh, uh, you... you you handle uh, many uh, uh, assorted... Uh, are these objects that you handle, uh, are they used objects? Have they been used before? Yes. You don't by any chance... If, if I had a magnet, could I lift up part of your product that you're, you're handling? Yes. yes. You're not a junk dealer by any chance. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mrs. Abrams is not a junk dealer. Well, I don't know. In Jersey, things are going on. Strange things at the end of the, <laughs> at the, end of the tunnel, John. We don't know what's going on, you know. <laughs> That's five down and five to go. That's what's going on, Miss Francis. Can't believe that money is junk to you, Fred. <laughs> it well, is money it that money? you deal with, according to what Bennett uh, interrogated you before and said, uh, was it legal tender? And you said yes. yes. And it is different kinds of money. Yes. That's correct. And it's not in a bank. Well, uh, do you make change at all? Yes. Uh, in a manner of speaking, you could so call it yes. making change. Do you deal in rare coins? No. No, that's six down and four to go. I'm going to give you one more minute to see if you can get there. There are never three little balls in front of the place where you work. No, <laughs> <laughs> no Bennett, that's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is there anything else going on where you work besides just money changing or money changing hands? Is there some other activity, no. like races or anything? No. No, no, thanks for the clarification. That would give you a no. Eight down and two to go, Mr. Allen. There isn't any eating going on. You're not a... Uh... Is there any eating going on? No. You don't make change at an automat or anything like that. Actually, Fred, I, you give me to... You said there isn't any eating going on. That's true. So I would say, yes, there is no eating going on, and you continue. John, you can ch cut half of your words in halves. I still wouldn't know what the other half is. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh... What can you do with money? You don't wash money. You don't have a money model. No, <laughs> no that's well, they fine. They wash money. They... Do you, uh, do you uh, take the coins from uh, uh, those stanchions that you put dimes in? What no. do they call those? No. Oh, this, was, meters. this was a real tough one, Bennell, so you won't have to feel bad about it. Actually, Mrs. Abrams counts money at Brinks Incorporated. Sits there all day counting it silver. <laughs> Mrs. Abrams said it wasn't so bad. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you very much for being our guest. Hope you had a good time. <laughs> All right, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which my friends on the panel are once again blindfolded. Are the blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, Mr. Dan. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery challenger, we dispense with preliminaries and get right down to the general questioning, which we will begin with Mr. Bennett Sir. Well, that vociferous applause usually means somebody who has had something to do with the movies. Uh, have you ever had any contact in any way with the motion pictures? Oh, Bennett, I, I sure have, honey. Oh, it's a lady. <laughs> Captain Hook, then. Is it a beautiful lady? Yes, sir. Well, thank you. And you are a movie star? 
Well, so I've been told. I try. It's Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you here in New York because uh, you have been doing some chore of one sort or another Ooh. in town here? Yes, sir, honey, a big chore. Well, would that chore have been, by any chance, a television show? I'm afraid so. Gosh, I bet this is a girl I've been waiting for for three years. I've been guessing you if you're the girl I think every other <laughs> week. Oh, honey, uh, let's, let's take a little time here now. <laughs> I wanna, you gotta get your money's worth. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just gotta go for it. You mind, honey? I'll do it slowly. Uh, did you ever make any movies with, with a fellow named John Payne? Oh, yes, I did. And did you ever make a television show with Diana Lynn? Bennett's getting Southern, too, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm how afraid long you want, so. How long do you want me to go on with this? Was it stage door? Well, I want to talk to Arlene and <laughs> Fred well, and well, Dorothy. All right, then. I'll give them a chance, and I'll pass. <laughs> you what? <laughs> well, I, uh, I know who it is, but... Um, I know you do, Bennett. <laughs> I've been waiting for you, honey. <laughs> All yes. right, Miss Kilgallen, Mr. Surface Pass. Uh, is your last name similar to the name of the discoverer of penicillin? <laughs> <laughs> I knew I shouldn't have come here tonight. I passed to Fred. Uh, as long as Bennett knows who it is, I pass to Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, since Bennett has really guessed you three or four times in the five years we've been on, and he's always been crushed that... He hasn't seen you. I'm going to pass back to Bennett again. <laughs> nice to talk to you, though. Well, we, we've gone a Rhonda, Miss Fleming. Yeah. <laughs> I was hoping you'd stretch that out a bit. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I'd like to stretch it out a bit by asking you, now that you've made your debut in television on Stage Door and happily on What's My Line, how you like the new meeting. Well, it's a little frightening, I must admit. This isn't nearly so bad. This is a lot more fun. But that live television, oh, man. <laughs> I what, think I'd be my makes... first and last. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You, got, you did wonderfully. Well, the very, youth is very kind. I mean. Everybody agrees. There. Well, what, is, what makes it tougher in your mind than making a movie? Well, it's like doing a, a whole movie in just a matter of a week's time with clothes and scripts, and then you get it all learned and memorized, and they change it on you a day or two before. And some of the actors maybe don't show up until two days before the show starts. It's <laughs> just a matter of, you know, it's completely hectic. But uh, it certainly is a challenge and a wonderful experience. And I, I did enjoy the show in spite of how I sound. <laughs> I know just I how you feel. When I was in college, I was in a college play and had a big line. <laughs> we got him caught like a rat in a trap. And I got out there first night, and so we got him caught like a trap in a rat. And brought the <laughs> oh, it's hard with one line, I know. <laughs> well, it's awfully nice to have had you come and visit us. Uh, Bennett, you can take a small punch at as you say goodnight to him. I've been will. guessing you every other show now for about two years. I know it. In fact, it was about a year ago, and... and uh, I caught that, that show where you said this is the first time in three weeks we haven't guessed Rhonda Fleming, and I thought Arlene Dahl was going to flip <laughs> fall right through the chair. Well, thanks very much, Miss Rhonda, for coming to Thank see us. You will you say hello it. to the panel? They'd like to meet you. Now let's see what the panel can do with another challenger. Would you sign in, please, sir? Ben? Ben Burley, is that right, sir? Right, Where are you from, Mr. Burley? Metuchen, New Jersey. Metuchen, New Jersey. Fine. Will you take a quick walk down there in front of the panel? Burley, sir. Got a sister Hurley? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> Thank you, All right, what? Mr. Burley, over here, if you will, and sit down next to me, and we'll give the panel one free guess as to what your line may be, beginning the free guesses with Miss Kilgallen. I think he writes verses for greeting cards. Mr. Allen. I think he's a furler at a flag factory. <laughs> Miss Francis. I think he's Gary Moore's barber. <laughs> Mr. Sir. I think Mr. Burley's one of the crew cuts. No, I'm afraid not. We'll let our viewers at home have a further look at Mr. Burley. At the same time, we will tell 
them what Mr. Burley's line is. <laughs> but Mr. Burley, let's see what the panel can do. You know how we score? Yes, sir. Fine, I won't have to explain it then. Mr. <laughs> Burley is self-employed. Let's begin the general questioning with Miss Francis. Is there any product involved in your self-employment? Yes. Is it a useful product? I would say yes. Is it found in the home? Yes. Uh, is it a necessity? No. No, it's not a necessity. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Well, is it in the home because it helps decorate the home? No. Two down and eight to go, Miss Peel Gallup. Then it does perform a useful function. But well, yes. yes. Yes, in the context of modern living, it performs a useful function. But you could get along without it. True. Yes. yes. Uh, do children enjoy this for its function as well as grown-ups? Yes. Uh, is it found in other places besides a house? Yes. Uh, is it enjoyed by all sexes? Yes. How many do you figure that out? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in <laughs> Uh, is it um, larger than a raspberry? Larger than a raspberry? <laughs> Bronx or otherwise, yes, it's larger than a raspberry. Is it larger than a baseball? Yeah, I would say yes. Yeah. Is it smaller than a television set? I would say yes. Is it solid rather than liquid? It's solid. Is it hard rather than squashy? Yes. If you had one, would, it, would you ever keep it in the living room? Mm, you could. Mm. Would you ever find it in the bedroom? Mm. You could. Mm. Yeah, sure. Uh, does it contain anything? I mean, is it meant to hold a... I mean, is there anything inside the outside? <laughs> <laughs> there is, unless you're in well, the Well, I knew... <coughs> I knew the day was coming. <laughs> yeah, there's something inside the outside. <laughs> um, if you dropped it on the floor, would it break? It wouldn't do it any good. <laughs> I would say, in a general description, if you dropped it on the floor, you could say afterwards, oh, I broke it. Uh-huh. But you might not have to understand. I see, but it, it would be likely that it might break. It could, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, does this thing come in different colors? Yes. In a it, manner of speaking, it yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Is it more square than round? <laughs> Yes, it's more square than round. <laughs> but it's not quite square. <clears throat> no, I wouldn't say it was quite square, no. If you had one of these things, would you be likely to just have one instead of several of them? You could have several, but I think that uh, Mr. Burley would agree that the general experience might be that there would be one rather than several, right? Right. Uh, would it cost more than $10? Some do, some don't. Well, what about yours? Well, we're now speaking about his. Some would, some, it could, oh. could cost more than $10. Would you buy them at a department store? You could, yes. Boy, this is a, an agreeable product. It does everything. Um, Except answer itself. If you, if you had one of these, would it be in plain sight when company came? It could be. <laughs> if it was, would you ever take it out so that they could see it? and do something with it. Yes, yes. you might. Yes, sir, it's fun. We got is about it, 10 seconds. Is it fun? Oh, yes. fun, yes, I should say. This is right. fun, isn't I it? I think it's fun. Fred, maybe he has an idea. Uh, no, is it uh, something that's used as part of a game? As part of a game, Fred? No, and we have run out of time, so we'll flip all the cards, and you'll flip when you hear this. Mr. Burley is an harmonica tuna. Tuna? <laughs> a very... A very quick explanation. He's the man who gets the plates that make the music and tunes the things so it makes the right kind of music. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Burley. You, A most interesting guest. Nice to have you here. We'll be back in just... Here comes Bennett Sir. What a wonderful Easter and a meet a harmonica tuner. Good night, John. <laughs> Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us on What's My Life? Transportation for What's My Line is arranged through American Airlines. American Airlines, the country's leading airline, now serving the United States, Mexico, and Canada. This has been a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production.
in association with the CBS Television Network.